Before we get any further, today's video contains spoilers for episodes 10 and 11 of The Bad Batch Season 3. If you haven't had the chance to watch them yet, we highly recommend heading on over to Disney Plus and doing so before starting the video. But if you're all caught up or just don't care, let's dive right in. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Bad Batch is back this week with another double episode that continued this season's wonderful trend of showing, not telling. This week, the show focused on showcasing the many small and large ways the Empire oppresses its citizens, from kidnapping children to terrorizing civilians. And at the heart of much of it stand the clones, which we're fairly certain make some of our viewers uncomfortable. Shows like The Clone Wars got us used to clones that just wanted to do the right thing. Clones with morals and spines that let them stand up to injustice. However, in reality, that was more of an exception than the rule. And the best example is the clones we see perpetrating the worst atrocities in this week's episodes, the Clone Commandos. In today's video, we'll be exploring how brutal the Commandos have always been and why their actions in the name of the Empire aren't out of character in the slightest and should come as no surprise. As we're sure you all know, Commandos were still clone troopers but bred to be tougher, smarter and more aggressive than their average reg brothers. They were also spared the behavioural modifications most clones underwent, making them more creative and decisive. This way, they could be sent on more delicate missions than the average clone. And some of these missions did not look great for the Republic. One such mission was run by Delta Squad itself, which is highly appropriate, as Scorch is the clone commando in charge of the Tantus facilities. A year into the Clone Wars, Delta Squad was sent to Coruscant, recruited by Cal Skarada himself, for a covert ops in the capital. Prior to Delta Squad's arrival, Coruscant had suffered multiple terrorist attacks on various JR facilities. The mission was to strike back at the terrorists and take out their cell. Joined by Omega Squad and two Jedi Generals, Delta Squad began their investigation in Kibua Hut, a cantina in the Entertainment District. Thanks to Kibu the Hutt's criminal contacts, the clone commandos were able to contact the terrorists, a cell hailing from Jabim, and arrange for a meeting under the cover of selling them plastoid explosives. Later that same day, the Republic Strike Force assaulted the terrorists' location and killed every single one of them. Now, we're not a fan of terrorists any more than the next person, but assassinating an entire warehouse full of people in the heart of the Republic is a tough mission. Due process would expect them to at least attempt to arrest the terrorists, but instead, the clone commandos buckled down and got their hands dirty in the name of the Republic. In other instances, Delta Squad travelled to the jungle world of Kashyyyk and exterminated many camps of Trandoshan slavers targeting the Wookiee population. On the surface, this might seem like a positive thing. The Trandoshans were slavers after all, and we've talked about how brutal they were to their prey on many occasions. However, Sending clones to cleanse an entire planet of intruders was a pretty brutal mission to assign a single clone squad. Not only that, but Delta Squad took it with more than enough glee. Sev, their sniper, had a particular penchant for killing his opponents. He enjoyed it, and the mission to Kashyyyk brought him a lot of happiness. We bring these missions up to illustrate how, during the Clone Wars, the clones, and particularly the clone commandos, weren't above perpetrating war crimes on behalf of the Republic. They were soldiers who followed orders, and in the case of the commandos, often actually enjoyed them. So when we see Scorch leading his commandos in this week's episode, it's not really that much of a surprise that they're following orders without any compunctions. Following the declaration of a new order, Delta Squad, now minus Sev, were one of the key trainers for the new Stormtrooper Corps on Sentax 2. And if that weren't enough, they were assimilated into the Imperial Commando Special Unit under Darth Vader himself. This commando unit's task was to hunt down any Jedi that had survived Order 66 and eliminate them. And then we get to the Bad Batch. Under Dr. Hemlock, Scorch and the other clone commandos have perpetrated several atrocities, especially in the third season. Just a few episodes ago, they attacked and nearly wiped out the clone underground with very few compunctions even if that meant killing their own brothers. This week's episode only add to the list. 
First, we have conspiracy to kidnap a child. Of course, Scorch himself didn't kidnap that little force sensitive child, but the Empire had set open bounties on them, and when Bane brought the child to the pickup point, Scorch not only didn't care about the kidnapping, but seemed pleased that this one would be less trouble than the subject back in Tantus's vault. In the same episode, the clone commandos didn't hesitate to shoot one of the children in the vault for trying to escape. We're certain they could have easily detained him. There were multiple clones against one small boy after all, but instead they went overkill and shot to stun. Why? Because that was the protocol and because they could. To round off the list, commando units dropped into Pabu to apprehend Omega. As terrified civilians fled, they destroyed their fishing skiffs and barges, illegally detained citizens and performed illegal searches. Although we should remember that this is a kid's show, so the assault on Pabu was kept very PG-13. The Shadow Trooper even asked Omega nicely to hand over the tracking device on her instead of frisking her and taking it himself. Our point is that, had this been a show for more mature audiences or a Legends comic, those fleeing civilians would have been gunned down in the streets as they ran from the commandos. Heck, even the PG version shows Scorch openly admitting they didn't care if they destroyed the village's livelihood and threatening point blank that, if Omega wasn't surrendered to them, their entire village would burn. In essence, Scorch and his commandos took the entire island hostage and would execute every single one of them until they found Omega. The threat serves a dual purpose too. It pressures Omega to give herself up to prevent more bloodshed. All in all, Scorch and the other clone commandos' actions in this week's episodes are reprehensible and morally corrupt, but that's nothing more than a continuation of what they'd been like since the beginning. And that's a difficult pill to swallow for some. Many of us grew up on shows like The Clone Wars that painted the clones in a sympathetic light and underlined how inhumanely they were treated by the Republic first and the Empire after. But the thing is, those two sides can coexist without being mutually exclusive. There were clones who fought for the Republic and stood up against committing atrocities. Clones who had Jedi generals to lead by example and bring out the humanity within them. And then you had other clones like Scorch and Sev who were set on civilians and happily went with those orders. When judging the clone troopers as a whole, it's important to remember both sides existed and neither was more common than the other. But what do you think of these episodes? Were you happy to see Bane's little cameo? Are you one of the many fans that think we were wrong and that the Shadow Trooper is actually Cody? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.